So I've just arrived in Zanzibar. I'm couch surfing here with this cool guy. And I've come here because some of my friends are here to play some music. And it's a very trippy music project where they connect diodes to plants and play music with the plants. Mambo. And so I convinced them to go to an orphanage here on the island. So we're gonna go and play plant music for the kids. It's a blessed day, it's a beautiful day. Greetings to everybody. When I was like three years, my mama would carry me and put me by her side while she was doing farming. So my mama and my father, they were doing farming, then I was sitting on the other side. So from early age, we grew up like in a garden, learning about spices, learning about vegetables, learning about farming. Until now, I fall in love with nature, take care of the nature, to protect the nature. And I want people to have the same thing. So, I'm a farmer, I'm an ethical travel guy. Spinach, corn, mint, papaya, oh, papai in Swahili, vanilla, turmeric, cardamom, beans, ginger, sweet potato, eh? curry leaves, lime tree, tiny lime. This one is a passion vine, passion vine, passion fruit, fresh on the tree. Uh, this one is cinnamon tree. We call it the queen of the spice because we use the leaves, we use the bark, and we also use the roots. Uh, we use the leaves to make cinnamon tea, and it's mostly used during Ramadan time, Islamic holy ones. As you know, many people fasting. So to break up the fasting, they prefer to drink cinnamon tea, which is good as appetizer we use the back but we prefer to peel the back of the tree vertical normally after five months it will be full recovered so we use cinnamon stick or cinnamon back as a spice in the pilau rice and spice tea that we prefer to use this one then the last but not the least is the root we use it as medicine so we use for back pain block nose that we use cinnamon root we call this tree as the queen of the spice because the leaves, the bark, and the root, they smell different. And apart from that, sometimes we dry the trunk and we use it as firewood. As you know, cinnamon tree smells so good. We get something which we call it as a romantic. Yeah, man. <laughs> Alright, so I've settled in at Martin's place and now we have returned to Stone Town and we're gonna meet Benjamin, my friend from Denmark now. <laughs> and here we are with Benjamin, my Danish brother, brother from another mother. And yeah, we're gonna make some awesome music stuff happen here on the island. Can we go? Yeah. Now let's go to the beach. Have a dip. Yeah. Let's go. 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 let us go we start this school like 2014, so we turn our house into a school. We want to provide better education for the kids. That's what we try to do. Nice one. So that's where we are going now and meeting my friend Benjamin, and we're gonna perform a show for the kids there. How many children are in the school? 
about 170 children right now from three years until 16. So this is Victoria right here. Yeah, Victoria. Yes. I'm Victoria yeah. and I have our school. We have 200 students and 11 teachers. Among the students, we have about 35 or 40 students who are orphans, other than can't even pay for school fee. We just help them. Because my mission, before starting this school, to help the poor children to be able to get the good education so that they can afford their own life later. We have shamba also, uh, we have farms, so that the parents who cannot afford to pay for their kids, they come to work in the farm, and then we sell, we, we plant vegetables, we sell them to the market, and then we get money to pay for teachers. But it's hard work, you know, it's very hard work. I believe you. Yes, to pay these eleven teachers and other workers, like uh, the, the, the cleaner, the security, the bus, is very difficult. When we consider last year, it was like uh, Corona. <laughs> so parents, most of them, they lost their jobs. And till now, some of them, they didn't, don't go back to their job. So they say, okay, we don't know what we can pay. We say, all right, you have to fight, do what you can do, and you will bring us money. So it's like that. But we pray God for these kids who can't even afford to pay for them. A lot of students in the in one class, they, you know, we first we built the, the house to live. It was your family house? Yeah, family house. So I think we need to either to, to, to rebuild <laughs> or to shift, find somewhere else to build. Mm. That's
What? Is he up to something? No. This. No. 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 Yes. Yes. No. 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 He's up to something. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Okay. Very early you knew that you were going to be a Rasta. What was the experience that made you make this choice? Alright man, the first time I really heard about it, I was about 80 years old, you know what I mean? And I went to a picnic, we was in a school trip, so we went to a picnic at a place called Jambiani. That's the place where I meet two elders, like real Rasta elders, you know, with, you know them like Angel. So I saw something upon them, then them tell her about Rastafari and they realize I'm in Africa. I'm a Rasta man. So me start to grow my life naturally. So that's why I'm a Rasta man, you know. And I being a Rasta is to try to change the community. You try to make the community realize it's not only about Christian and Muslim that we're talking about. It's not only about religion thing that make you live. I'm more in a spiritual journey, you know? I'm more into open up myself and I want to share more to the people. Yeah? It's all about changing from negative to positive, man. just finished the show here at the Muslim orphanage and right now Benjamin he's setting up to make the plant music for the kids so I'm just gonna follow and see how it goes Benjamin is trying to connect the plant device to the plant out in the garden we will see if he can get some sound out of the plant
parents, they don't have. Okay. Them not, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be hard for them, you know, and see this kid and the look from their face, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then when you come into there, then you bring some smile to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of the greatest things, man. When I when sitting with the plant device in the end, yes, it's like I could feel um, the kids coming, the small kids. True. Oh boy, he was only this tall. True. And he come and he like put his hand on me and he was just like standing, yeah. leaning on me and I could just feel how he was uh, taking energy, you know. True. I could feel my heart going like, just, you know, True. and I, I could just feel how he relaxed, like, it was yeah. very strong to feel how they probably don't have that kind of contact with a parent or adult, you know, yes, so. True. Yeah. Everything's gonna stay in their heart. Yeah. Life, man. I hope so. Yeah. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, you the truth. It will definitely stay in my heart. Yeah, yeah. You give it that much. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> really fun. children are gonna remember that. What does it mean to them to get this, these two musungus out there and do silly comedy and music and circus? And what was it for them? What do you think? Many things will catch your eyes, you know, many things. If you look, you walk around, they'll catch your eyes, but only a few things will catch your heart. And when them catch your heart, they're gonna stick there forever. For these kids, from my point of view, they might look upon you and see oh, the oh, Mzungu is out here playing some games and show everything. But what you put in them heart, in them body, that will never go away. Yeah, you did something, even 10 million is not enough for that thing that you've done. You do it for love, so them keep it for love. It's like what I say, if I give you something with one hand, then you receive in two hands. So this is what I see. You have keep a lifetime memory in 